this is going to be a more fun video and hopefully helpful in what plants you can grow too. Hey everyone, Natissa here on the subtropical Florida Gulf Coast, Zone 10. And in this video, I want to show you all the plants and seeds that I got this weekend from a local plant festival. I love these kind of videos because of people that I watch in similar climates and growing situations. They'll show the things that they have ordered and purchased and they'll explain why they did. And it is because of those videos, along with garden tours they do, that has introduced me to plants that I would have never thought to try and grow and have become some of the biggest successes that I have growing in my garden right now. So I hope this video will help you too. Just so you know, I am located in the subtropics of Florida. So a lot of the year we have extreme heat humidity and the UV rays of the sun is a lot stronger than in many temperate places. And we are also entering our most difficult growing time of the year. You know, summer will be here before you know it. It's already getting very hot and had no rain in a long time. So a lot of these plants I have selected and seeds are because of the climate that I am growing in and the situations that I have going on. Also, I'm still researching a lot of these plants. So this video is not about me telling you information that I know or how to grow it or whatever. This is just to show you what I have purchased and why in hopes that it will help you be introduced to a plant that you might consider growing yourself too. All right. Going in somewhat of an alphabetical order, we have our first seeds. Callaloo amaranth. I try growing lots of amaranths for the leaves. I know you can eat the seeds, but uh, I just thought I would give this one a try. This one is known to be quite productive and we love our greens here, so I'm going to be trying this probably next year and the amaranths seem to do well in our heat and humidity, so I'll try anything that's good with that. Next one is the Guyana long bean. I hope it's this particular variety, but I've read um, one of the uh, nurseries that's near where I live talk about this noodle bean, and the bean can get to be three foot long, and I do have a variety of a three foot long bean, but it just never seems to do very well compared to that Thai soldier long bean I always talk about. So I'm just hoping that this Guyana long bean will do very well like my Thai soldier long beans, because that would be cool to have a three foot bean growing in the garden. <laughs> so. We'll see. And long beans do very well in our heat and humid climate. And another bean, the Madagascar lima bean. I've read, I believe I've read, that this is a perennial lima bean, and I'm assuming it must form a tuber in the ground or something. I guess it would die back in our cooler months and then regrow when things start to heat up. I've also read it does very well in our heat and humid climates here in our summertime. Ugh, so it'd be really nice. I really want to give this a try because we like beans as well. And yeah, a perennial lima bean, I'm up for that. <laughs> I have more seeds. I count pigeon peas to be in the bean category. So I do grow pigeon peas and you've probably seen on the tours that I have that, but I wanted to try new varieties and they had available some, a brown pigeon pea and a black pigeon pea. And I grow a pigeon pea that has like the, um, it has like speckles on it, really pretty. So we'll see if these grow any different. Either way, it's sometimes fun just to have different varieties. Now for carrots, I didn't expect to find any there, 
but I did. It is called a, I think it's pronounced Uberlandia carrot, Uberlandia carrot. And uh, the place that I bought this from, the booth, a lot of these are local places around here. So they grow this carrot and they say that it flowers better here in our climate than other carrots. Now I will say, yes, I grow carrots and I've had them go to flower for me pretty easy, but I do grow my carrots from fall through winter. So that could be a factor. Maybe they grow these in the spring. I don't know. But either way, I love growing carrots and I had to try it. So this will be for our fall and winter season. And for flowers, I got a few. Blanket flowers. I know my husband really enjoys the blanket flower and I do too. I've started them from seed before and it worked. But I tried again because we had this growing in a spot where we ended up putting a garden bed. So I had to move them and they didn't quite like where I moved them, but I didn't uh, tend to them either. So that could have been my doing. But I've always heard that these reseed very well and I have not uh, had any show up around the garden that I noticed. I tried to grow them again from seed. In fact, if you saw my video of I'm growing everything or everything I'm planting, either way, it was for the fall and winter time. I did plant these and none came up and it was saved seed. So I don't know, but I told myself we're going to do these again, but we're going to do a started plant. And that's something to think about for yourself is I like starting from seed. There's many reasons why I like doing that, but sometimes it is just better to get the started plant. So yeah, this will be nice. Also, I think you can divide the plant. I have to look into that, you know, propagate through division cuttings, but still excited. More flowers I got. Uh, this is a seed mix of the Early Sensation Mixed Cosmos. I have found that Cosmos is probably one of my favorite flowers and they're so easy to grow. So I didn't have this variety, so well now I do. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And the last flower purchase I got was another pack of seeds. The Francis's Choice and it is a French marigold. And I've heard it said so many times how French marigolds do very well to fight against nematodes in your soil. And well, I have very sandy soil and yes, loaded with nematodes. So I thought, I don't know if I have a French variety. So now I know I do. But also the question in me still is, because I'm not a scientist or anything, but you know, sometimes things are sold to you to be better. For example, marigolds, from my understanding, help fight nematodes, but they always say, like I said, that the French marigolds help even more. But I don't know how much more, because um, sometimes, like I said, they'll sell it to you as being better, but is it that much better I don't know but either way our marigolds this past fall and winter were just so stunning and you know I can't go wrong what was also an exciting find was at the booth of the urban harvest I know she's local here as well and I know she has a channel but in her booth she was giving away some free chaya cuttings and chaya is a perennial green here in the subtropics. And I wasn't going to get it because I do have a dwarf chaya already. But I got to thinking, I'm pretty sure she has a different variety. And I have some, I mean, long story short, there's just some weird things growing on my dwarf chaya. Not sure if it's a fungus or something. So I thought... Oh, might as well try a new variety. It just came in a cutting form and I put, you know, put it in my own container with some soil. But that'll be exciting to see grow. I actually got a lot of stuff from her booth and one of the other plants I got was a African blue basil. This, if I remember correctly, is a perennial basil where I live. 
Um, I need to do more research on it, but I thought I read that it's mixed with a purple basil. And I am finding, I mean, so far, two years in a row, my purple basil is just doing so wonderful. So much better than my green basil at the moment. So I was thinking, hmm, you know, I just want to try this one because I've heard it does well in the heat. And, well, we like our basil, so we'll give it a try. From another booth, I did get the edible ginger plant. And usually, well, I had ginger growing very well in my garden. And last summer was just such a difficult summer to grow in. We had no rain. It was just way too hot. And I didn't realize until later that I'm pretty sure I wasn't keeping the ground moist enough in general. And that's my struggle with now. But anyways, I bought a lot of ginger from the grocery store and would just start them out in the garden and, it, and that was going well until that summer. And at the start of this spring, I thought, you know, I want to grow my ginger in containers this year because my turmeric did decently well. So I have videos on me harvesting my orange and blue turmeric. So I wanted to grow ginger in containers as well, just to see if it would do better. So I went around my garden to dig up where I had them planted last year, thinking I would have a ginger rhizome, and no, they were gone. So I had to do it. I bought myself an already started plant because I just keep buying ginger from the store and all that. And I just thought, just get the plant, be done with it. And sometimes, like I said, it's worth it just to get the started plant. And then from there, do your cuttings, your seed saving, all that. So yeah, an edible ginger. Another herb, or I don't know what you would necessarily categorize it as, but it's called Panadol. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is said to help uh, sort of deter your rodents. And I guess something in the smell is supposed to do that. And honestly, I've never really found anything that helps with that. Or maybe my expectation is just too high because sometimes we hear those things and we think to ourselves, oh, we'll never deal with another issue again with this plant. And that's usually not the case. Sometimes it's just something that kind of helps keep the situation at a, a lower scale and um, well we'll see with this plant but what's also interesting again do your own research I'm still researching all of these plants but I've read it can be a pain reliever so that interested me and it was a good price so yeah we'll see also, I noticed if you grow Cuban oregano, it looks very much like it as far as the, um, I don't know how it's, it's like a succulent, succulent type of plant. And with Cuban oregano, you can make cuttings very easily just by, you know, cutting, cutting a piece off, putting it in a glass of water and it roots very well. So this looks like it would do the same. So I felt good about getting it. Oh, and I will say it does have a sort of a musky-like smell, and I think that's the scent that's supposed to keep rodents away, so hey, maybe. Another herb that was on my list actually for buying seeds, but I found the plant, was skullcap. And again, in my very, very little bit of research, I've read that there are different varieties, and if I understood correctly, you know, different varieties preferred different conditions and soil types. And I did see that there was a skull cap that, you know, was okay with our sandy soils, loved the full sun and the heat. So I don't know which one this is. I, I don't recall seeing it on the sign. But yeah, I mean, it looks like, uh, looks like it might be a little overwatered. But uh, we'll get it outside. We'll see. I've, I've read it. I think it helps with anxiety and things like that. I mean, there was a huge list. Ugh, I, got, I, I have a lot of homework to do. <laughs> Another herb. 
This is not just any green garlic. This is society garlic. Patrina from Homegrown Florida had talked about this in one of her videos about, I think it was like 30 herbs and spices that she's growing. And she talked about this plant being very strong in its garlic taste. And I don't really try to grow, I mean, I love garlic, <laughs> but we haven't really tried to grow actual garlic here because I've heard and, you know, I, I believe it, that it is a harder crop to grow. And if I can find something that at least gives a very nice taste of garlic and maybe even have some of the health benefits that are the same as actual garlic, I mean, that to me, like I just, why grow actual garlic if this works? So I'm very excited for this. Another plant you might be able to consider an herb is the Vix plant. Again, this is very much like a succulent, like a Cuban oregano. It definitely has smaller leaves to it. But what really has my husband and I interested in growing this is I've read somewhere that you can take these leaves. I mean, you can smell it right away by touching it or breaking it. In fact, my room here smells like this Vicks plant, but it has that, I don't know, uh, I don't know what the description of the scent is, but what you are to do is I guess take the leaves or cuttings of this plant and you can boil it. And from my understanding, uh, you can breathe in the fumes if you have blocked up nasal passages due to sickness or whatever. And I, I guess it's supposed to help clear the nasal passageways. And when we got a cold back in uh, this past winter, <laughs> very uncomfortable sleep, as you might know, if you have very, very stuffy nasal passages. And man, I wish we had this plant. So this will be nice to have on the property. Sometimes plants maybe won't heal your ailments all the way, but if it helps you feel more comfortable while you have to have those ailments or whatever, I mean, worth having for sure. So mix plant. I already have these seeds. I have the plant growing in back, but I did get more of jicama. And I wanted more seeds. If you saw my spring seedling tours I've been giving earlier in the season, I showed you my jicama seedlings and this happened last year. My jicama will come up, but it just, I don't know, I don't know. They look like they struggle and they continue to struggle a bit but then there's always like a plant or two that makes it in my few years of growing it. So even though I do save some seed, this was me just making sure I always have some backups. That's why I always say buy a lot of seed and save a lot of seed because it helps you feel a little more comfortable in growing. So pick them up. And an interesting root tuberish crop, Toffee Tambo, I think it's pronounced. Um, I think it comes from somewhere in South America. In fact, in my video of what is this growing on my turmeric, someone commented when they saw the strange sort of bulbs that were growing on the roots of my blue turmeric, they mentioned that it looked a lot like this plant. So um, I've always wanted to grow this and I have grown it once and accidentally because of our difficult summer, it didn't make it. So I'm trying it again. But when I did look up this plant after someone had commented about that, I thought, oh, wow, that looked exactly like what was on the blue turmeric. But I really was growing blue turmeric. I mean, you could see it. But it was just, it, it was just interesting. So I'm going to try that again. I was told and read that this does like to have some shade, just like, you know, your ginger and turmerics. So yeah, this will be fun. And I did get a squash and it is the seminal pumpkin. Now, again, like with the jicama, I, you know, sometimes like just to have a lot of seed available because, you know, things happen. So I do have a, like a packet and a half, <laughs> but I, I thought I'd pick up another one just in case. And seminal pumpkins is a tropical 
variety of pumpkin. And here in the subtropics of Florida, I cannot grow those, you know, butternut squashes, all these other popular, really beautiful pumpkins that you see a lot of people in temperate climates grow. So if you are in a tropical, subtropical area, heat and humidity, tropical pumpkins are the thing you need to look at. The scientific name, Cucurbita machata. That is supposed to help with, you know, the bugs that we have and all that. In fact, I've tried so much to grow pumpkins and squash and failed miserably. And the first success I've ever had was a tropical squash. It was, I'm pretty sure, a Kelbaza squash because I got that from the grocery store. But Kelbaza squash and Seminole pumpkin, both tropical squash. Two more on the list. This category was more of kind of like a fun category or what I like to call like a fun grow. We wanted to try tobacco. I've heard that, you know, you can grow that pretty well here in Florida. I've also heard that it is a very uh, difficult plant to start, but once it's growing, it grows very well. We'll find out. But the seeds are like dust. I'll see if I can get you close up on that. But yeah, we always wanted to try it. My husband's more, more, uh, I mean, I'm excited about it too, but he's very excited about trying this and just see how it grows. What can we do with it? Because it's not just for, you know, what you might think, but there are some medicinal properties in tobacco, but there's also a ton of different tobaccos out there that do different things. But uh, I don't know, it's just a fun grow. Oh, I forgot one other type of herb. A kava plant. I can't believe I forgot to show this. We were so excited to get it. We drink a lot of the tea. It's a very, very calming tea and helps just kind of relax the mind. And you know, this world's a crazy place. The brain can really be spinning on different things. And this tea helps us. And I'm so happy to have been able to find this. And, and like I said, at this plant festival, the people in the booths selling all their plants, they're local to me. So these are, you know, plants that pretty much is going to work very well in our heat and humidity. So I'm very excited to see this one grow. And I know the, the lady that was selling it to me, she did say to put it in some shade. So, oh, we're going to do that. And I read that you can do cuttings with it. So we'll see. Now, last but not least, this is what I consider just a fun grow. We had to do it. A toilet paper plant. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is also known by, I think it's blue spur flower, I think is the other name. And it looks very much like the Cuban oregano Vix plant and that panadol that I showed you. So I'm pretty sure we can take cuttings from this, put it in some water and root it. So that will be fun. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we'll use it. This, like I said, just a fun grow. <laughs> Something I forgot to mention. I did not get this at the local plant festival, but I did get it that day. And it was a, a yam. <laughs> a tropical root crop that I've heard you can grow very well here in Florida. And I've also heard that you can take some of the yams from the grocery store. And this particular variety is known as a name yam. Uh, name spelled like the word name. And yeah, I gotta do a lot of research and homework on all of these plants to see how they grow where to put them in the garden, how to propagate them. This should be fun too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just, you know, like I said, a fun video, but also seriously, hopefully something that you can, you know, look at and think, hmm, would that do well in my garden? And I know these type of videos help me too. So there you go.
On the end screen, I'll put a list of some of these nurseries that I know I got some of these plants from. So that way you can check out their website and see what they have. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.